Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Tongue TV and today what we're going to do, we're going to look at all the different species and subspecies of blue tongue that are endemic to Australia and to kick that off, we're going to look at Teliquiskin coides. Now, according to records, Teliquiskin coides was the first ever reptile to be described in Australia and that was done by Hunter in 1790 and it was given the name Skin coides due to its skink-like appearance. So that's why these guys fit in the family of skinks. Okay, now the range of Teliqua skinkoides is really pretty damn massive. It starts in southeast South Australia, then moves up into central and eastern Victoria and New South Wales, all the way up into central and eastern Queensland, all the way over the top of the Northern Territory and then finishes in the northwestern part of WA. And across that huge range, these animals vary quite significantly. And that's what we're going to check out now. So across the massive range that Teliquiskin cordis covers, it's actually split into two subspecies. You've got Teliquiskin cordis skin cordis, the eastern blue tongue, which is right here. And you've also got Teliquiskin cordis intermedia, which is the northern blue tongue. Okay, so in the southern reaches of the eastern blue tongues range, the appearance is very typical of this animal here. You've got masses amounts of, of dark pigment and you've also got this striking set of temporal black eye bands here, which is very, very typical of the eastern blue tongue and it is the first thing you would look at if you were to, to try and pick an eastern blue tongue over, over the other um, Skinkoides subspecies. So as we move north through the range of the eastern blue tongue, you can see that the animal actually starts to change in appearance. So from this more southern typical animal, we move into sort of an animal that you would find more in Queensland. You can see that the, the tone of the temporal band starts to soften. The blackness starts to dissipate a little. And that can be seen across the entire animal. And then as we move further north, into far north Queensland, you can see a real marked change. When you check, when you, when you compare the two from the southern tip to the northern tip, the, the, the temporal eye band has almost disappeared and the color is very, very washed out. Okay, so as we move from North Queensland over into the Northern Territory, we then pick up the range of the Northern Blue Tongue. And this guy is typified by the striking caramel banding that you can see all the way across the flanks and over the top of the animal. And by this time, also, the temporal bandings have pretty much disappeared. Another striking feature of the northern blue tongue is the, is the magnificent size of the animal. It, it, this guy can reach sort of 60 centimetres plus. Okay, so then as you move west, over into the northern reaches of Western Australia, you then pick up another form of northern blue tongue, and that's the Kimberley blue tongue. And this guy here, this is typified by peppering, which is apparent across the whole body of the, body of the animal, over the head, down the flanks, all down the tail, and also has some very brilliant fluoro coloration through it, which can range from yellows to pinks to lavender hues. Okay, so that covers the full range of the Teliquiskin coides. We're now going to go all the way back down south and pick up the range of Teliqua nigra lutea, the blotch blue tongue. So the blotch blue tongue, or Teliqua nigra lutea, was given its name based on its appearance. Negro meaning black and lutea meaning yellow. And this was first described by Coy and Gaimard in 1824. So the blotch blue tongue is split and given two different common names. All the same species name, but it has two different common names, and they're based on its locality. The first one is the lowland blotches, which are found in southern Victoria and Tasmania. You've got the Victorian form here, which is basically your classic blotch blue tongue with your typical blotches across the back with striking black undertones and a few hues of yellow. And then the other form of the lowland blotchy found on Tasmania, again, has the very similar blotches across the back, but has sort of a more granity appearance through the animal. But again, both these guys are, are your lowland form of the blotch blue tongue. Then as you move into the northern range of the blotch blue tongue, it picks up another name and it's called the alpine blotchy. And that's because it's found in the 
in the highland regions of New South Wales. And this is a very cold, unforgiving climate, and these guys are pretty tough. Probably the toughest of all blue tongues can, can deal with temperatures which drop down to sub-zero at times and right up to sort of high 30s, early 40s in it, it, throughout the range of the season. So that's it, that's your blotchy. Tiliqua occipitalis, or the western blue tongue, was first described by Peters in 1863 and it was given the name occipitalis which describes the relative large scalation on the back of the head. And the range of this guy is in the southern drier reaches of southern South Australia all the way across the south coast and into Western Australia and continuing across the, the south coast of Western Australia all the way over to the west coast of Western Australia. And typically its appearance from South Australia where it starts with a, a very dark tan coloration with almost black bands across its back and then as you move into Western Australia which is where this guy's from the tan sort of dissipates and the bands become sort of more cream in appearance and the animal has altogether a little bit more washed out look but both of these forms are still punctuated by that very striking black eye band. Next up we've got Tiliqua multifasciata and this guy was first described in 1919 by Sternfield and given the name multifasciata which means many bands due to the many bands which appear across the back of the animal and these bands are caramel and again punctuated with pinstripe cream bands in between also these guys again have got the very striking temporal eye bands the range of these guys ranges from central western Australia all the way through central northern territory and through to western Queensland. Again that's quite a, quite a big range and these guys vary across that range a little bit as well. You know you've got the more striking yellow form in, in western Queensland all the way over to western Australia which this guy is which is sort of the more tan banding and actually a smaller animal as well. Next up we have Tiliqua rugosa, the shingleback. This guy was first described by Gray in 1825 and given the name rugosa which comes from the Latin meaning wrinkled and that's obvious due to its wrinkled appearance. The range of the shingleback is quite broad. It covers the whole of southern Australia other than the east coast. And across that large range it has two subspecies. The first one here, which is Tiliqua rugosa asper, which covers western parts of New South Wales and Victoria and into South Australia. Now the appearance of this animal is defined by its dullish browny black background with lots of creamy peppering throughout. Some of that creamy peppering can be quite brilliant white as well, but that's essentially a classic look of the Tiliqua rugosa asper. So as we move across the range of the shingleback and move into Western Australia, we pick up a second subspecies name, which is Tiliqua rugosa rugosa, and that's these guys here. And the appearance of these guys changes. Instead of having the cream flecking across the body, you're now getting these pinstriped cream lines across the body and you're also getting yellow coloration in the head of the Perth form which is what these guys are and then as we move into the gold fields you get these really striking reds in the head and red actually right through the body and actually of the shinglebacks the Western Australian form will be considered the most striking. So that covers the main species of blue tongue in Australia. There is however one more species and two other subspecies of shinglebacks that need to be covered. What I'm going to do with those is pass you over to Dr. Steve, who's waiting in the classroom, and we're going to have a look at these guys. Thanks for watching. Hello, everyone. I'll be covering the less common members of the Taliqua genus, starting with two more shingleback subspecies. Taliqua rugosa canoe, the Rottnest Island shingleback, is typified by yellow to light green speckling over a dark brown colored base and as its name suggests, its distribution is limited to Rottnest Island, which is located off the west coast of Perth. 
Rottnest Island separated from mainland Australia approximately 7,000 years ago, and the lizards have been genetically isolated from other populations, diverging significantly enough to justify their classification as a different subspecies. Rottnest Island is also home to the well-known quokka. Taliqua rugosa pilara, the shark bay shingleback, is another subspecies named after its natural distribution. This subspecies has the northernmost distribution of the Western Australian shinglebacks, occurring along the western coast at Shark Bay, approximately 800 kilometres north of Perth. This subspecies commonly has a dark brown base colour, with small light cream patches distributed over its body, with some animals having a light tan coloration on their head. Both of these two subspecies are currently only held in captive collections in Asia and Europe. Lastly, we have the smallest member of the Taliqua genus, the critically endangered pygmy blue tongue, Taliqua adelaidensis. Despite its name, the pygmy blue tongue actually has a pink coloured tongue. The habitat is restricted to grasslands in the mid north of South Australia. Pygmies live in burrows formed by wolf and trapdoor spiders. The species was thought to have become extinct until 1992 when a specimen was incidentally found in the stomach of a road-killed brown snake. Monato Zoo in South Australia has a captive breeding program for the conservation of these rare lizards and were able to successfully breed 14 offspring in January 2016. Thanks for watching Blue Tongue TV and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Cheers!